Good afternoon everybody. Whether you're watching here in the car park or live on Ringwood TV, we are thrilled to be able to be together. Welcome to Love Ringwood Community Carols and Cars. Let's make some noise. This afternoon we're going to hear a number of readings from the Bible based on eyewitness accounts of the life of Jesus Christ. We're going to start with Jesus' best friend, John, what he wrote at the start of his Gospel account. He wrote this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. And in Him Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Jesus came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural descent or a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word, Jesus Christ, became flesh, made His dwelling among us. We've seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Shall we pray? Almighty God, loving Heavenly Father, we invite you to meet with us in the car park this afternoon, or online, or even watching later on YouTube. May each of us experience something of the wonder of Christmas. In Jesus' name, Amen. Stood a lonely cattle shed Where her mother laid a baby In a manger for his head Mary was a mother mount Jesus Christ, her little child
Well, good evening. It's so great to see so many of you out in person where we can come and worship in this very special season. We're going to sing a couple more carols now and we pray that in this moment you can really encounter and worship God.
We hear now from the Gospel of St. Matthew, who describes those events which led to the birth of Jesus. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is a night of our dear Saviour's birth Long lay the words, thin and air abiding Till he appeared and our soul felt his worth
Right, our next reading is taken from Luke uh, and chapter 2, and it's the birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Empire, Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quinquinius was the governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her thirstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Amen. God bless you all. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. 
you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has appeared, which the Lord has told us about. just sung Jesus Lord at thy birth but how was Jesus already Lord and King at his birth the answer was explained in our first reading in the beginning was the word that's Jesus Christ through Jesus all things were made we might be celebrating Jesus's birthday remembering when he came to earth to live as a man But in reality, Jesus came from eternity. He always has been and he always will be. Jesus didn't just come from eternity. He was born into human history. We heard in that other reading, Caesar Augustus, King Herod, Quirinius, governor of Syria. Jesus was born into history 2,000 years ago. No serious historian can doubt his existence. The only question is, who was he? Was he really who he claimed to be? God himself come down to earth. Jesus Christ came from eternity. He was born into history, but he lived in poverty. Even by the standards of that day, he was born into a poor peasant family, a nobody, and very soon became a refugee. Lived in poverty. But you know, as he grew up as a man, he taught with incredible authority. No one ever taught like Jesus taught. His words and love are the reason we care for the sick today. Jesus' words and love are the inspiration behind hospitals and schools. Jesus' words and love led people to seeing all people as equals, men and women, black and white, young and old, all made in the image of God. 
Jesus' words and love led to the abolition of the slave trade and the fight against its resurgence today. Jesus' words were not just pertinent at his time, they were powerful. The broken were made whole, the sick were healed, the blind saw, the deaf heard, even the dead who were brought back to life. Jesus came from eternity, was born into history, lived in poverty, spoke with authority, but at the height of his popularity, he died on a hill called Calvary. But it was all part of his strategy to set people free, to show his love for you and me. No longer do people need to live in fear or confusion. Yes, COVID has reminded us all of our own mortality. But friends, death is not the end of the story because Jesus Christ is in charge of our destiny. At the moment, you know, we're all trying to sort out our bubbles for Christmas. Anyone got it figured out yet? Who, if anyone, we're going to allow into our houses for those five days so we don't get or they don't get contaminated? There's a similar system in Jesus' home in heaven. Jesus wants to allow everyone into heaven, but only those who are not contaminated can enter. But here's the problem. We're all contaminated with a virus called sin through the wrong things that we do. That's the problem, but Jesus is the solution. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, he's provided a way for us to be made clean. You know, you're all going to wash your hands when you get home. But allowing Jesus to wash our hearts, clean us on the inside, is really what Christmas is about. Jesus has the keys for the door into heaven. In fact, Jesus is the door. He said, I am the way. And the truth and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. In COVID terms, Jesus is the medicine and the vaccine. And when we trust in him, he changes us on the inside. He changes us internally. To the weary and sick, he offers strength. To the lonely, comfort. To the weak, courage, to the confused, peace, to the abused, healing, to the addicted, freedom, to the arrogant and self-absorbed, and we've all been like that before, confrontation and a better way. And for all of us who turn to him, he helps us to turn from our sin and trust in him. Jesus Christ came from eternity, was born into history, lived in poverty, spoke with authority, died on Calvary in charge of our destiny, changes us internally. And finally, Jesus brings hope for eternity. He offers light and life and love, living hope that lasts forever. As Isaiah wrote 27 centuries ago, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those living in the land of a deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. Jesus offers all of us hope for eternity. How do we receive that hope? Whether we're here in the car park or watching on the TV or tuning in later, we need to receive with humility. Receive with humility. We need to kneel like the shepherds and the wise men at the feet of Jesus that first Christmas. As the carol goes, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him, 
Give Him my heart. Our gift is ourselves at Christmas. Just as God's gift to us is Himself in Jesus Christ. We simply say to God, I might not understand it all, but I'm hearing that you love me and that you sent Jesus to earth at that first Christmas. Maybe you might want to just, just raise your hand just to say, yes, God, I'm sorry I've been trying to live my life without you. This Christmas, 2020, I turn again from my sin and with your help, I turn to Jesus. Please come in and, and help me to make a fresh start. Make a fresh start. Clean me, Jesus, from the inside. Lord Jesus Christ, who came from eternity, who was born into history, who lived in poverty, who spoke with authority, who died on Calvary and is in charge of my destiny, can change me internally, can bring me hope for eternity. I receive you today with humility. Amen. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel O oh, ransom captive Israel That mourns in lonely exile Until the Son of God Appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Day spring come and cheer our spirit by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy cloud of night and death's dark shadow bird to fly. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Thou day of David come And open wide our heavenly own Make safe the way that leads us home And close the path to me
So let's pray together. Father, we praise you for the gift of the Christ child, for Jesus Christ, whose birth we gather to celebrate in wonder and in awe. We thank you that Jesus is God who walked and talked with humanity, who saw our needs and met them. Jesus, word of made flesh, we praise you. Loving God, you promise us that when we come to you in prayer, you will listen to our cries. We come before you now as people who are saddened and bereft because of this virus. And we pray for your intervention. As we gather as a community tonight, uh, we take this opportunity to remember those who have lost family members and friends to this virus. We take a moment to remember those, um, those local businesses who have either struggled this year or have had to shut down completely in our town and others because of this virus. We remember employees who have been furloughed and anxious about their future employment. We remember staff who have lost their jobs to this pandemic. We pray for those who have been made to be lonely and isolated. Loving God, we are searching and crying out for hope. Help us to find in the wonder and awe of Christmas a hope that can lift our eyes from the despair of this virus to the hope and joy of your Son's coming. Jesus, word of made flesh, we praise you. And as we gather here physically and online, we want to remember our local heroes from this community and many more. And we want to uphold them in prayer because we know that their work goes on. And so we pray for our wonderful NHS, for doctors, for nurses, for healthcare assistants, allied health professionals, administrators, both in our hospitals and in the community who work to help bring healing to those in need. We want to thank you for our wonderful schools in this community and in the communities represented here, for head teachers who have worked hard to put plans in place to keep our, uh, our children safe. We pray for teachers, for teaching assistants, for school cooks, for administrators, for governors, for fundraisers, for all who work to keep our children safe and flourishing in schools. We thank you for our amazing care workers, for those who work to support the elderly or those in need, both in nursing, residential homes, and in other care settings. We thank you for them. We thank you for Ringwood Coronavirus and other volunteer groups who have got essential medication and supplies to those in need. We thank you for the hard work of those volunteers. We thank you for our emergency services, for police officers, PCSOs, firefighters, paramedics, community first responders like those here tonight and all who help to keep our communities safe. And we pray for our businesses, our supermarkets, our cafes who give us places to meet, who give us places to buy essential goods and services. Now we don't normally pray this way but We've got so many local heroes we want to uphold in prayer. So why don't you honk your horns and make some noise for our local heroes tonight. Father, you sent your son Jesus to be born amongst us and to know your love for us. We acknowledge the pain of being distant from those we love, but we celebrate that in the midst of darkness and despair, there is beauty and, uh, and wonder to be recognized. And as we gather here, we recognize that beauty, the opportunity to come together as a community in your name and to celebrate the birth the wondrous birth of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Our final reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, with the visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard that this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, 
For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, I by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Angels from the realm of glory wing your flight to the earth He who sang creation story Now proclaim Messiah's birth Come and worship Worship Christ the
receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven, heaven and nature. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a great pleasure to be here, and it's time for thanks. Thanks indeed to Churches Together for everything they've done, and to this wonderful ensemble. But I do believe uh, Santa Claus is in close proximity, and it's his job to do thanks proper. It's mine simply um, to say that Ringwood has come up trumps as usual. We all know about the COVID concerns, but this year, the shop window condition was enhanced by a wonderfully improved uh, turnout 
Unfortunately, because of the uh, uh, constraints that are on us, the uh, presentations are rather limited. But suffice to say, we had um, an online voting situation this year, which brought us in, if you count votes and first choices, nigh on a thousand votes. Um, the first of which in total, and another first for Ringwood, because as far as I know, it's the first time scaffolding has ever featured in a prize, but it is indeed uh, uh, the um, uh, Greyfriars building, complete with scaffolding, that had the most vo votes in total, and therefore overall winners. But the competition was to do with commercial premises with shop windows, and I'm very pleased to say the winner of that is Ringwood Fabrics, and the owner of Ringwood Fabrics, Angela Cork, is here, so we can Ask her if she would to come forward. Thank you. A vote of thanks for a wonderful effort. At the moment, merely a display certificate, which I'm pleased to hand to Angela. Um, the prize that she will receive is advertising in the Ringwood and Fording Bridge. Um, details of that to be agreed and sorted. But well done, thank you. Can't shake hands, but we can do that. Um, this wonderful cup will be presented to Greyfriars for their efforts. Uh, runners up in the shop windows is Calm Among the Chaos, who will follow Angela along. Other than that, we are done. Thank you very much indeed for all you've done. Thank you to Angela for her efforts, which improved the look of the town. And I believe Santa Claus is on his way. We'll complete that. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. So, Ringwood, Merry Christmas! Somebody told me that in the national paper this morning, somebody wrote that the magic of Christmas was dead this year, not in Ringwood. I have been more busy in this town than ever previously. The magic of Christmas is alive and well. I have three things to say to you. Number one, thank you so much for all the presents that have been collected for those that are going to need them after Christmas. It's very sad that we couldn't have the Christmas Eve as usual, but never mind, you've still been amazingly generous. And secondly, the food bank. Amazing a collection of food at a time when we know that the food bank is needed. Again, Ringwood, Thank you very, very much indeed. Applaud yourself. And finally, God bless you all. Very Merry Christmas and stay safe. Good night. Fantastic. Now, have you got one more for us as we go? Okay, so may we know God's blessing in Ringwood this Christmas and we've seen on the messages on, on Facebook as well. Ringwood in New Jersey are watching as well. So greetings to you guys, the other side of the pond as well. And God bless you all. And we go out to go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heaven there shone a holy light. The shepherds fed trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that held our Saviour's birth. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. 
little on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born